Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink I actually have in bottle form, but uh, it's no longer produced. Um, admittedly, I thought I wrote this down, but I guess I didn't. Um, this was made exclusively for someone. Um, it was an actual brick and mortar pen store at one point, I believe, and then I think they shut down and just became an online store. Uh, it's a Noodler's Ink. It's an Eternal Ink. It's uh, Victory Over Terrorism and for Peace. Uh, freedom of Democracy. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's Iraqi Indigo. It's, uh, and people actually forget that Indigo is actually, you know, the plant is actually more purple than blue. So uh, it was actually kind of nice to see this. However, as you might be able to see from the bottom, there is a lot of particulates in this ink. Uh, it does tend to settle. So uh, something to be aware of. The uh, pens that I used were this Pilot Parallel and 1.5, and this Lamy Safari with an extra fine nib. Now, admittedly, I don't have any ink that compares with this one in color and quality, uh, it, or, you know, like, properties. If I had to pick one, actually, in a weird way, I'd probably go with Lexington, uh, like, the way it, it performs. But uh, color, the closest thing I had was actually Noodler's Purple Martin, which is actually just a little bit darker and not as pigmented, or, you know, has, has as much particulates in it. Now, because this is an eternal ink, I thought I'd see what it could stand up to. Getting the pointy thing. So, here's water. You can see it actually kind of broke it up a little bit, but I think that's actually because the page started to come apart. Here's denatured alcohol, which did absolutely nothing. Hydrogen peroxide, which sort of started to break up the paper and brought out a little bit of pink, but that's about it. Uh, ammonia pen flush, which, again, sort of brought out some pink and then a one-third bleach solution, which actually did start to break it up a bit. And uh, I actually, when I was washing it out of my parallel, it actually started to dye the plastic, this bit right here, and um, it actually actually left a bit of a purpley stain in the feed, the plastic that makes up the feed. So something to be aware of, diligent cleaning. Check out the chromatography. Now, here's how you're supposed to do the chromatography, but it's interesting. You can definitely see that halo around where the initial drop was put. It is pink. And then you get sort of this spotty thing going up, and it's just sort of more purple. It's almost slightly bluish at the top. And then here I let it dry, which is not how you're supposed to do it, but you can see it's, uh, it actually kind of reminds me of, oh, what was it? Oh, the purple V-Mail series. Uh, North African Violet, in that the color is sort of inverted. But, uh, no, that didn't do that. Anyways, uh, as you can see, the dot is very there, very purple. And actually, is weird. The particulates physically dried in the paper, and so when I dunked it in the water, the water actually had to, like, find a way around the edges. It did not want to actually go through there. But there you see the pink. All right, paper test, top down to density, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. I'm gonna try and hold this still so you can get a good look, but I am highly caffeinated today. Yep. So as you can see, there is some shading, but not a lot. Uh, the extra fine took nine seconds to dry, the 1.5 took 20, but bear in mind, it's a 1.5. Also, the flow on this was very wet. I would say it was distinctly wet. I would give it a 6.5 out of 10. Later, eventually I might just give it a 7, but yeah, definitely a 6.5 at least. It is very purple. This is noticeably purple. I think it looks like the indigo plant, but that's, uh, that's just me. Now, check out this water test. Except for the slight dying of the page, you probably can't really tell that there even was a water test. It got a little bit lighter, but actually that's uh, from the paper breaking up. Kind of fascinating, right? Definitely held up. Next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. Or again, you do get some shading. 
not a lot. You get a little, I think you get a little bit more than there was on the Claire Fontaine. I think it's a bit more distinct. You start to see a bit of a halo effect. Now the extra fine took eight seconds to dry and the 1.5 took 18. Yeah, it's uh, mm. we did have some problems. I'm gonna try and bring this in close so you can see. Look at the edge of the end. See that? See those feathers right there? And then we actually have a little bit of it here, a little bit of it there. So weirdly, there was some problems right along the edge with some feathering, but that is the only place you see it. There's no spread, there's no bleed whatsoever, even in the scrubby where it's very heavy, so there's that. And again, the water test is quite clear, quite there. There's very little change. Did dye the page just a little tiny bit with that pink like we saw in the chromatography paper, but that's it. Next up is Tomoe River paper, where I don't know, I think the cream brings out a little bit more of the red and the purple, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. Uh, distinct shading. Here you get a lot of shading, and here you most definitely get a halo effect, which is sort of like a when you get a a distinct outline around the wettest areas. Now, this paper is known for absolutely drawing out dry times, and it most certainly did. The extra fine took 16 seconds, the 1.5 took 27, but I mean, look at how wet this ink is. It was really flowing. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's dense. There's a lot of stuff in this ink, you know, there's a lot of particulates. So the fact that it took this long to dry really doesn't surprise me. Now, we don't get sheen, but we do sort of get a shininess in the absolutely wettest parts. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that on camera, but you definitely see it, of course, in the 1.5. But yeah, that's kind of curious, so I'm always kind of interested when that happens. But yeah. Echo... I mean, it's always to taste, but, you know, also the 1.5 is quite a broad nib, so it does leave a lot of ink, and this paper is so darn thin. But the water test was what really impressed me. Uh, whatever is special about the construction of this paper, it loves to let ink just wash away as soon as you add more water. And even, you know, semi-permanent inks tend to not behave quite as advertised on this paper, but this is absolutely there. In fact, the camera is making it look a little paler than it is in person. Here, I cannot distinguish the two. Yeah, and didn't dye the page. It's just there. Quite impressive. Now, for the next three papers, I only use the extra fine. So, here's the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. Two and a half seconds to dry. Now, this paper, if you've seen any of my other tests, this paper is god awful. But if we bring this in close and look at it, I mean, that looks, I mean, you know, so here's like hand for scale. You know, this is one quarter of an eight and a half by 11. You don't really get much feathering. You get almost none. And where you do, it's in the absolute wettest parts. And it's just the occasional feather. It's nothing extreme. It was actually very, very well behaved. It took two and a half seconds to dry. You don't really get shading. You get no bleed. For an eternal ink, for a permanent ink on the world's worst copy paper, granted this is an extra fine, but it's a European extra fine. And this is a really wet ink. I was not expecting this. Also, the spread really isn't much. If you compare, it's really not much of a difference. This seriously surprised me. And again, the water test, absolutely there. Did not blink. You get a little bit of a dying of the page, sort of like just around here, but that's about it. It didn't feather, didn't explode. Quite impressive. Now next up is me notebook paper, which is thinner than the copier paper, and which usually outperforms the copier paper. Now here it also took two seconds to dry. You don't get any shading. You do get a little bit of a wooliness which is not surprising because specialty inks tend to be a little aggressive, but yeah, you don't really get like crazy feathers, which is actually quite impressive. Now, again, here, there is no bleed through, but there is pretty significant show through, but I think that's just because of how thin the paper is. But also, I mean, for ink this wet, I'm impressed. 
Now, the water test, the ink is absolutely there. The paper freaked out. Didn't really dye the page except sort of right here, so again, rather odd, but didn't feather, didn't explode. Fantastic. Now, lastly is moleskin notebook paper, which I hate. If you've seen my videos, I get very frustrated with this paper. Sorry about that. A very sudden and violent uh, cat fight started to take place directly outside my door, which is two feet to my left. So, uh, yeah, I had to stop. Anyways, as I was saying, moleskin frustrates me beyond reason. Uh, there's no reason it should frustrate me this much. You should make better paper. Anyways, this is generally a slightly more absorbent paper, but it did take eight seconds to dry, which is odd, but as you can tell, you actually get some shading, which is rather bizarre. Now, you do get some feathering. I'm going to try and keep it still and get the light on it. You do get some feathering. You do get a l but it's patchy. You know, like here it looks fine. Here, not so much. It's, it sort of comes and goes, and it's even like woolly in some places and then not in others. But yeah, there is very little spread. There is just a few feathers, which if you know this paper, is actually quite impressive. And there is no bleed. None. Which you're probably thinking, okay, extra fine. No, okay, this paper usually freaks out. Now, here's another thing. You see that right there? See, you almost see something? That's with the 1.5, and granted here you definitely get some wooliness and you get some feathers, but the thing is, I also forgot to point out that I wrote the name in the 1.5 on all three of the cheap papers, and if you'll see, it does not even bleed in the 1.5, so, I don't know, there's something weirdly almost magic about this ink, and this is, the water test is usually where this ink really freaks out on this, er, any ink freaks out on this paper. But as you can see, I mean, there is pretty much no difference whatsoever. It, I mean, it feathered a little, but no more than it did here. You know, and even that's patchy. It's bizarre. So, uh, yeah, there you go for your consideration. Uh, Noodler's Eternal Iraqi Indigo. It's made by a shop, or it's made for a shop that doesn't really exist anymore. I got this at the San Francisco Pen Show. And, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking about maybe trying to do some sort of giveaway when I reach some milestone coming up. I'm, I'm like, a, maybe a hundred thousand channel views or, like, a thousand subscribers. And this is definitely one of the inks that I would be giving away. Just because purple isn't really my thing. But, uh, yeah, very impressive on cheap paper. For your consideration from the Triple N Network. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.